Got ourselves a new best of three here. And spawning in the upper right hand corner, we have one of the strongest Terrans out there today. It is Gumi Ho, the Gumi God. One of my favorite Terrans. His opponent, a lesser known player. I do not know this player at all. I've never seen this player. I don't even remember seeing this player in a bracket before. So excited to see him for the first time. Our Protoss player, it is a close with a K, so I have to pronounce it differently. This isn't close. This is close. I have no idea what level close is. Uh, close did just take somebody down in the bracket. Somebody who was higher ranked than him, too. And okay, close is Korean. This is making me wonder if close had a different name before. So I'm going to go ahead and look this up. Um, and we're going to see. Let's see if I can find who close is. Uh, yeah, like there's like no information on this player. They have now won a couple of matches and they've lost 0-2 to Dark, which honestly tells me almost nothing. They did beat somebody who's... Yep, I... <laughs> I, I don't know, man. This is telling me very, very little here. I'm going to try to find their opponent that they just beat to get here. But their opponent's name was Winter. And I just don't know which Winter they were playing against. There are actually so many. Well, you know what? We'll just have to get a sense of their skill from watching this game. Gumiho being a little bit fancy with this Reaper Micro. Ringing that Adept around the Rosie there. Oh, man. Gumiho trying to sneak in. So far, close is not falling for the bait. Is uh, going to take some more damage on that Adept, but the, the Reaper will run away. Close will hold on. Going for a Stargate opener, pretty standard stuff. Maybe close is like an undercover Korean. Maybe this is like undercover parting. How sick would that be? He just has to give up before he gets to the prize pool, even if he's beating everybody. Because uh, I think he's still doing his military service, so he can't he can't make money from other sources during that. But like theoretically, he could just give up, forfeit his match before he makes it into the prize pool. Gumio gets a scout on the Stargate. He already has Marines out and a Cyclone on the way. It looks like he's planning on going for an attack. I'm gonna pick up these Marines in the medevac. Bring the Cyclone across as well, but he's got to defend the Cyclone first, or defend the Oracle first. The Cyclone is not out, and the Marines are out of position. I Meaning this Oracle could get in here and get some damage done. Ooh, just goes for the tag instead. Doesn't want to stick around and uh, see if that Cyclone can get something done. There are two Cyclones out front already. Damn, Gumiho is here. He is waiting for these Adepts. Two of them are going to go down. I think the third one will probably go down too. That's going to make it very hard to defend this. The Oracle needs to come home and defend it. There is a shield battery and a couple stalkers here as well. Ooh, the Oracle turns on, but it needs to get back to the shield battery. It tags. It's going to run out of energy. And now it is going to be no help at all. And I'm getting real worried for close here. Gumiho, he's smelling the blood in the water, and he is just pushing. Super shield battery turns on, but that is such a temporary hold. Can the Stalkers move out and get some damage on here? They kill the Medivac. That's a nice kill. They try to focus down one of the Cyclones. They get one. They get two. They get three. Oracle comes in, helps out a little bit. You know what? This is very well handled by Close. 
The Marines are still getting some big damage done here, though, killing a lot of these Stalkers. A couple more going to warp in. The probes are forced to be pulled. That's going to be three, four, five dead probes. I'll be honest, at the end of the day, that is a really nice hold for this Protoss, who is in an extremely difficult position. I am already impressed with this Protoss, and I would not be surprised to see them playing in more events. I hope we can get them to sign up for the KSL. I mean, this is like up-and-coming Korean kind of play right here. I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'm overselling it. But I'm very impressed with that hold. I think a lot of players would have just crumpled to that hold. Uh, to that attack of Gumiho. And I think that's what Gumiho was hoping for. Maybe even expecting. Ooh, Raven looking for some auto turret harass. Hasn't even dropped the auto turret yet. Close already pulling away. There it goes back down. It's going to get a kill or two. But Close was very clearly ready with the probe pull there. This is a couple probes. It has some lost mining time. The end of the world. Gumiho, though, taking a slight worker lead with that. But Close's third base is about to finish. It's here, it's on location. Phoenix trying to get the kill on the Raven. Gets the kill on the Raven. The auto turret does not kill that Phoenix. Close again with, I mean, you know, that's some micro. It takes some micro. Close out here with some stalkers as well. These stalkers do have blink. It doesn't look like they're going to poke in. They're just keeping an eye on things. Of course, Close has that third base. So he doesn't really need to pressure super hard. Just gets to hang out over here. But I love this. So a second Oracle was built for Close. Um, that I don't think Gumio necessarily knows about. I don't know what this Oracle's been doing. Probes coming, or SCVs coming out, rather. And it, this is looking like a two-base attack. If there wasn't a third base landing. Oh, the stasis trap. No, there's another one. Oh, man. That one hitting a huge group of SCVs. It's like eight workers there for Gumiho just doing nothing now. Gumiho has so much of this army supply, too, just chilling. It's not a good feeling. Um, I mean, Gumiho is very, very good on the worker production. This is something I've been praising him for recently. And it seems like such a silly thing to praise somebody for, but the fact that he has maintained a worker lead, despite the third being much later and having to float over, a lot of workers getting caught there. Gumio has still been building more workers than his opponent. And it looks like Close is going to chill at 60 workers for right now, uh, which is full saturation uh, when not having these two gases. Gumio is still going to have a very strong economy behind this. And he's going for a push. He's going to scan up. The tag will see this army. There's no tanks with this. Gumiya does have to be a little bit careful of the heavy charge lot style that Kalos is going for. Heavy charge lots can be very, very good, but I do think Kalos needs to get into some splash damage. Would not hate to see some Colossi coming out here eventually. Um, or even a few High Templar with Storm could be nice. We don't have any ghosts from Gumiho. The Ghost Academy is on the way. And that's going to be huge. The Ghost Academy plus Widow Mines can make the Zealots seem like the worst units in the world. Gumio tries to get a couple units forward to trigger that Stasis Trap that he's just going to scan the high ground and kill it. The Widow Mines are burrowed. They have been tagged, though. Close. Very restrained. Sitting on top of this ramp. I feel like he did have some Zealots counterattacking. I'm not sure what happened there. But he's just hanging out on top of the ramp. Gumio trying to draw him down. I will say Gumio is up an army supply. Some Zealots on the backside going to try to come in here and get these Widowmine shots to connect, but Gumiho lifts that Widowmine up, doesn't let it connect on errant Zealots. But this is good for Gumiho. There's no fourth base right now for close. He's not taking one. He's very focused on this attack. He is trying to get into Storm. And if he could land a Storm or two on this, that could be huge. But I don't think he has any High Templar here right now. There's a few around. Oh, they're back here. Okay, so there will be some Storm shortly. 
It's about to finish. I don't think the High Templar have the energy for it, though. Close needs to be really careful still. He supply blocked at 157 right now. He's going to go for it. EMP is dropping. Widowmine's getting massive connections here. There are the storms, though. Can this even it out for close? It still just looks like there's going to be too much tear in here as Gumiho. Ah, the army's getting kind of low, but the medevac's doing a great job healing. Reinforcements coming across the map. Some ghosts. Close, though, holding on for now. Gumiho is just way ahead in upgrades, though. I didn't even realize it. Oh, no, these Widow Mines. Ooh, almost getting the connections. Close holds on for now, but Gumiho, obviously, 50 supply ahead. He's up at 2-1 to the plus one attack of Close. And while Close has done a fantastic job so far in this game, it feels like Gumiho put the big choke hold on him, just out macroing him a bit, getting that army across the map, keeping his opponent on three bases, while Gumiho macroing behind that, getting his fourth base up and running. He's ahead a bunch of workers. He's ahead of full base. He's still up 30 army supply. But again, those upgrades, I feel like, are the real big story here. How do you overcome a three upgrade lead, which is what we're very close to having here, as Gumiho is going to finish that plus two armor soon. Storm can be very good, but you got to nail the storms. And we saw Gumiho do some beautiful splits earlier. Well, not even splits, just pulling out of the storm, right? And then the storm ends up hitting a lot of the zealots. Can backfire a little bit. We have a widow mine drop coming in here. Trying to just get some probe damage. Gumio being annoying with this, and he is getting some damage. Not a ton, but a little bit. Close says, All right, screw it. I'm shoving across the map, but he is down 50 supply right now. And Gumio just has to hold. Widow mine's getting some beautiful connections. EMP is peppering the entire army. The storm's just not hitting. Gumiho's forces, and there is not going to be enough Protoss here. Too much Terran. Overwhelming. There's the GG. But I gotta say, man, for a player I have never heard of and never seen playing one of these, that's some impressive stuff. Um, yeah. The 17th seed in the bracket of 18. But close, I don't know, man. Playing pretty solidly. Gumiho clearly going to be the favorite here against most Protosses in the world. <laughs> but, I again, I feel like a lot of players would have just crumpled to that early attack that he did. With, with what close had to work with, specifically an Oracle that got no damage, losing the Adepts on the other side of the map, it didn't look pretty. But he managed to make it an interesting game. We've got about 12 and a half minutes into that one. Let's see if game two goes similarly. Spawning in the upper left-hand corner of Oceanborn, we have none other than Cloud9's Gumiho. And his opponent, the potentially up-and-coming Protoss player, Close. Mm. I'm just happy to see a Korean player that I have never heard of before. I don't know. Maybe other people have heard of him. Maybe I'm the odd man out here. But uh, I don't think so. <laughs> I checked as Oligulac. Close has played two matches before today. He beat a uh, fairly low-ranked player and lost to dark it's kind of funny how that happens like the the amount of variation between the the low ranked player and dark is is just insane there's like 530 ranks between them or something so close could be anywhere in there but i'm gonna say i feel like he's more towards the top maybe top 200 on a league life could potentially see it a little hard to say obviously we've only got one game to go by while there was some good play there from close gumiho was very clearly ahead 
uh, the entire game, I would say. And any small advantages Close had were counteracted by some other major disadvantages. There's a faster third base, but overall lower worker count. Um, I don't know if Close had a bigger army at some point, but was down upgrades the whole game. But we will watch Close's career with great interest, especially as somebody who runs a Korean-focused event. Same little poking and prodding from Gumiho's Reaper. He was being kind of flashy with the Reaper control last game. Um, taking one hit from the Adept, though, he's got to be a little less flashy. He's trying. Look at how flashy he's being. Here we go. Stop. <laughs> Whoop. I can't believe that Reaper got out of there. I can't believe it. And Gumiho is proxying a Starport. This usually implies a Hellion drop in the main, and that does seem to be the plan here. As Hellions are going to be coming out of Gumi. And heading across the map to get picked up in that medevac. This can be a good build, but I feel like... I don't know. I feel like this used to be a good build. You know? Like, once upon a time. But I don't think I've seen it work in a long time. Ooh, I like this a little bit better. Okay. Gumiho, instead of going for a medevac here to get the Hellenes to drop in the main, he's going to proxy a Liberator. Now, with Phoenixes out, this Liberator could get zero damage done. But the Phoenixes will have to choose what to do. Because the Hellenes and Reapers at the front are also going to hit. And it looks like it's going to be six Hellenes and a Reaper. So the Reaper can bop the units out of a wall. If there is one, it doesn't look like Close is going to go for a wall. The shield battery will be up, but the Hellions could just run straight into the main. And with six of them, three Phoenixes is not enough to do a substantial amount against them either. They will be able to get worker damage done. And actually, the timing of this for Gumiho is so crucial, and I think he's going to nail it. He's going to come in with the Liberator, and then the probes are going to pull away. Liberator goes down. The Hellions are diving in now, and they're going to go straight up into the main base. Now there are four Phoenixes out. They're going to get a lift on one, two, three Hellions. Oh, this is about as well handled as you can get from the Protoss, but that is still 15 worker kills as that Reaper snipes off the last couple there. That is a very painful amount of damage. Granted, that cost Gumiho a lot. He just killed 15 workers, but technically he took the worst trade. Also, his starport is floating across the map. So now he has no starport production. There's no Vikings coming out. There's no medevacs coming out. There's not another liberator going to try to harass. It's just a floating starport. I think Gumiho is nice and safe back at home. He's got more cyclones on the way. He's getting that cyclone speed upgrade, which is an interesting choice. Um, he's building a second starport, too. Maybe he was worried about this one dying, or maybe he's going into something cheeky off the back of this. It does look like he's going to focus on bioplay, so I'm really intrigued by the Cyclone Speed upgrade. This could just be straight up to try to defend against the, uh, the Phoenixes. Getting a few Cyclones out to fight against those guys. Close is going to take a third base. I think this is a great choice. He sees the third being built for Gumiho. He's got the Phoenixes around. Checking things out. Uh, and he's trying to close out that worker gap a little bit. Oh, Gumio's going to go for heavy Viking production, it looks like. So he's just going to try to get straight into quad Viking production. I mean, he might go for some medevacs first. But he's anticipating the Colossi. He's going to scan and sees the Robo. Doesn't see the Robo Bay, but I feel like you just know, right? Like, this is going to be Colossi. It's not the heavy charge lot follow-up to Phoenixes that we see sometimes. And that means the double starport here for Gumiho is going to be a massive boon. 
he can pretty much immediately have eight Vikings. That's going to be a tough thing for Close's Colossi to deal with. As he is pumping those out. He's got Thermal Lance on the way. He's getting into charge on plus one also. Kumio's plus one is done. Needs to start up that plus one armor and maybe get another eBay and an armory going. All that good stuff. Close has done a good job bringing that worker count a little bit closer. Pun definitely intended there. Phoenixes get another kill. I think that was a dead Phoenix, though, as Close realizes he's up against heavy Vikings and that Cyclone upgrade getting yet another Phoenix kill. Gonna recall these Phoenixes, and Close is starting up Phoenix production again, and I like this choice a lot. I like this choice a lot. He sees heavy Vikings out of Gumiho, and he's like, all right, I'm also going to commit to the Phoenix production. He doesn't need as many Phoenixes as there are Vikings. He just needs enough to buffer for the Colossi. Oh, but as I say that, he stops the production. And this gets me a little bit worried for him. Gumio has a very solid looking army right now. So many Vikings. Um, I don't remember how many it takes to one shot a Colossus. Is it like 12 or something? But uh, he'll be able to take those Colossi out very quickly. If he just focuses them down, he can just ignore four or five Phoenix. I was kind of hoping Close would try to get up to like nine Phoenix. That's kind of a solid number where Gumio has to really respect it. But right now, I don't think he really has to respect it. He is going to immediately do a ton of damage to one of those Colossi before this fight even starts. It does look like Gumio is just kind of posturing a little bit. He's got a fourth base on the way back at home, so if he sees his opponent doesn't have a fourth. Oh. Oh, this is a move here. He's going to go for the double drop of Marines in the main base and use the Vikings to try to buffer for these Marines so they can get some damage done. The Vikings will not help against the charge lots, but the charge lots are on their own. It looks like it's enough to force Gumiho away, at least down into this third as everything comes up into the main for close. And oh, man. Close is having a tough time dealing with this Terran army. Bunch probes going down. The Vikings still just buffering. It looks like all the Phoenixes died. So now these Colossi, oh, they're so exposed. There's just a couple of stalkers here. And Close really, really struggling to deal with this. Another Colossus is gonna fall as Gumio dives for it. The third one has 12 hit points, not the scariest thing in the world. 17 probes have died, and Gumio is just going to land the Vikings and drop the rest of these Marines out. The high ground here for Close is getting some damage done, but now the Cyclones come in to fight as well, and it looks like Gumiho is just going to overwhelm here. The recall to get the units into position. Gumiho is going to back up after that. The one Colossus comes back into play. Now that all the Vikings, or most of the Vikings, are dead. But 20 probes went down. Gumio took a favorable trade with the army. Killing most of the Colossi. And now he's dealt with the Phoenixes as well. He's gonna get into Liberators. I mean, this is looking... This is looking very, very tough for Close. I think even the best Protoss in the world would struggle from this point against Gumiho. Shocked he didn't die there. Uh, but again, Close has been very impressive with his play for somebody I have never seen or heard of before. It's rare to have this kind of situation in StarCraft 2 in these days. So it's cool to see it. Gumiho, I mean, honestly, it's a good fight for Close. This is about as good of a fight as he could have hoped for. He is going to push this army back, but... Oh, this Liberator getting some kills when it really shouldn't have. Uh, but he's going to be forced to tap out. I think the Vikings went back in landed and killed 12 more probes uh but even without that there just wouldn't have been much of a chance there for close he killed that army in the middle of the map gumio had more behind that and while gumio did take the 2-0 i think the real story is a player we've never heard of before playing a uh, a solid set of matches